What do you do when you have a recipe you really want to make, but you don't have all the ingredients? You substitute. Well, today's substitute teacher is yours truly, and I'm going to make an entire dish following a recipe, but I have to substitute every single ingredient. Hopefully this goes well, and hopefully you learn something along the way. Let's see how it goes. Hello, Rashawn. Are you calling to deliver my special mission? I am. I have a challenge for you today. The only thing I know about the challenge is I'm going to make a recipe, but I have to substitute every ingredient. That's right. So I found a recipe that I think that you're going to do great at, um, but it is going to be tricky. Okay. So the recipe I pulled is a classic jambalaya recipe. Okay. So it's just a super classic way with okay. like um, the holy trinity and shrimp and rice and chicken. Um, yeah. Okay. Challenge accepted. I'll okay. keep you updated. Thank Good you. Luck. All right. So in place of my andouille sausage, I'm going to do Italian sausage that I found in my freezer, which is spicy and some bacon. So because andouille is going to have a smoky note to it. So that'll get that from the bacon and then the sausage. Um, so that's going to establish my theme, which is going to be Italian. And then in place of the chicken, we're going to use deli turkey. And then in place of the shrimp, I'm going to use tilapia. Um, for our holy trinity, which is onion, celery, and bell pepper, I'm going to use shallot, carrot, and banana peppers. I think that'll be good. All right, so this is how... You want to get started. Basically, you're creating a flavor at the bottom of your pan. In this case, it's bacon and Italian sausage. I'm going to prep this other stuff. Y'all, you know, this fish is like still mostly frozen, but it makes it easy to cut. And most of you might not have like frozen fish in place of frozen shrimp. But if you are finding that you can't get all your ingredients, you know, don't feel like there has to be something to replace it with all the time. You can just leave it out all right so this is looking good going in with my shallot carrot and banana peppers it smells really good all right all our veggies and meat are just where i want them as far as this point goes so now i'm going to add in the rest of the ingredients and get it simmering in place of our cajun seasoning i'm going to add some chili powder some paprika a little old bay and some hot sauce. Okay, I'm adding some dried garlic powder in place of fresh garlic. I don't know if that's allowed. Place of the oregano, some fresh dried basil. Place of a bay leaf. I'm gonna add a little bit of dried cumin. We'll just give it a little bit of earthiness, which is what you get from a bay leaf. It's a little smokier. It's not really the same flavor, but when you're in a pinch, you just gotta do what you gotta do. And then I have some fresh rosemary. This will have to go in place of the thyme. In place of my tomatoes with green chilies, I've got some pickled jalapeno and some whole tomatoes. I'm just going to kind of crush them up with my hands. And I'm adding almost the whole jar because it called for 20 ounces and I have 28. This is also the time you add in the rice. In this case, it's couscous. Calls for two cups of rice. So I'm going to do like two and a half cups of couscous. It's not quite as absorbent as rice, I don't think. Okay, and then for the liquid, the recipe called for three cups of um, chicken stock for the two cups of rice. The measurements are a little different on couscous, so measure your liquid based on whatever starch you use. For this amount of couscous, I need about two and a half cups of water. And I'm also going to add a little salt for my liquid um, because the broth would have been a little bit salted. All right, this is looking really good and looking like jambalaya. Okay, so that couscous is going to absorb that liquid. Let's give it a taste and see how my salt level is. Got great flavor. Salt level is good. I'm gonna add in a little Worcestershire because that's Cajun. And that'll be part of my flavored liquid. I'm gonna bring that to a simmer, cover it, 
And when it's almost done, we'll add in our fish and then our turkey. Okay, so it looks like this couscous, it is the Israeli couscous, um, so it's a little starchier and more absorbent than the smaller grain couscous. Um, so it is absorbing my liquid really quickly and it's more starchy than rice. So it's trying to stick on the bottom. So I'm giving it a little stir because it's not done yet and it looks like it needs a little more liquid. So I'm going in with a little more water. It looks so good, look. Probably needs about five more minutes. So actually I think I'm going to go ahead and add in my fish bites because they're still a little frozen. I'm just gonna nestle these into my jambalaya. The final couple ingredients that I need to find substitutions for are the handful of fresh parsley, which I do have and it's killing me that I can't use it, and then the garnish. So I'm gonna do like a breadcrumb topping. I'm gonna add in some olive oil. I wish I had panko breadcrumbs. That would be better at this point. Beggars can't be choosers though. Add in a good bit of breadcrumbs, dried basil. When you're making substitutions, again, think about what their purpose is and then it will help you come up with a substitution. So if the purpose of adding the parsley is to brighten it up and freshen it up, what else could do that? And in this case, it's gonna be lemon. It's coming together, y'all. I'm going to now do my turkey in place of chicken. It's just not gonna be as meaty. And this just needs to be warmed through. All right, I think it's done. This is it, it's creamy. It's got flaky bits of fish in there. The tomato, the bell pepper, the carrot. It's good, let me see what the turkey tastes like. Mm. I'm just gonna top it with my breadcrumb topping. All right, and then my lemon zest. That's a wrap, folks. Time to call the judge. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Oh my gosh. Not terrible. What are you calling it? It's not jam jambalaya. I know, I was like, I, you can't even call it jambalaya, unless you call it have Italian. You have you tasted it? Yes, it's really good. I'll taste it again for you then. Okay. This has turkey, sausage, and fish in it. Oh, can you see this one? There you go. Oh, I just dropped it on my computer. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> Here it goes. It's good. It's kind of like it's kind of like a paella now a little bit because you have the fish in it. The lemon is good. Yeah, and that grinds it up because those are a lot of like rich and savory flavors. And there's a lot of heat from the jalapeno, but also I mean that old bay has some kick. The Italian sausage was spicy. Right. And I added some hot sauce in place of the Cajun seasoning too. So, I mean, I wish you could taste it. Then I think you'd really be proud of me. I do too. Oh, mm. I'm so proud of you. And I don't even have to taste it. And now you have lunch for your whole family. I do. You did it. And I think, I would, I think I'm probably going to repay this favor to you though. So be expected. Oh. So be expecting a call from me next week. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mom. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. The bottom line is, if you've got something you're craving but don't have all the ingredients, you can still make it. If you need to call your substitute teacher, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and follow my recipes on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Let's eat.